Carstone Championship Tour America's Winter Preliminary. My name is TJ, TJ Sanders Sanders of TJ Sanders Gaming. And I'm joined on the desk by just Brian Kibler and Cora Songbird Giorgio. Brian Kibler, unfortunately, I've taken over your title, but... You, you can know, have it, man. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we have had six players now qualify for the America's Championship in just a few weeks. And uh, we have two more matches left to go. So that means two more invites, two more tickets to punch to that America's Championship. Brian Kibler, have you been disappointed with the lack of dragons so far this weekend? I mean, we did see some dragons. Uh, we did see the, the Freeze Mage Mirror won by the player with more dragons, which is the kind of Freeze Mage Mirror I can get behind. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I mean, we've, we've seen a, a great uh, number of series, and uh, we have an incredible lineup of players who will be moving on to that championship uh, just next month. Yeah, and uh, Brian Kibler, you're the dragon guy. And Cora, over the course of the weekend, I've dubbed you as the secret paladin girl. So, uh, have you been Does that make you secret keeper? <laughs> I'm actually a horrible secret keeper, and Twitch chat is just loving to feed off of my secret paladin play. So, thank you for dubbing me the secret paladin girl, by no the problem. way. I really appreciate that. No problem. Um, but no, surprisingly, we, I think we've seen more dragon success this weekend than we have secret paladin success. Yeah. As it should be. <laughs> As, it, As should it should be. be. I agree. I all, agree. Dragons all is are noble. All is right with the world. But let's talk about our next matchup. It is going to be Admirable, also known as That's Admirable. And uh, he's going to be taking on Al Sky High. So we have a player who a lot of people know about in Admiral. He's a pretty popular Hearthstone caster, streamer, ex-pro player, now back as a pro player. And then Al Sky High. This is a pretty good matchup. Um, do you remember Al Sky High's deck lineups, I uh, believe yeah. it was. He, uh, he played against Fibonacci earlier, yeah. and uh, he was playing, I believe, the uh, the, the, Reno, the Reno Lock deck, yeah. the Freeze Mage deck, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe Secret Paladin as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and Admirable, we actually haven't featured on stream, if I recall correctly, but uh, I believe he did prepare with uh, Chalky yeah. and, uh, and and that group, uh, the Salt Boys, as they were calling themselves. The Salt themselves. Boys. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I, it, I don't know if we're going to see necessarily the same kind of lineup from him. Yeah, we did see him on stream once, but uh, Admiral was a guy that plays really fast. So the, I must have missed it. The, the <laughs> game so fast, went really we don't fast. remember it. All right, well, here they are. And uh, yeah, Admirable will be playing that secret Paladin deck while Al Sky okay. High is playing uh, Freeze Mage. He, he blinked. I thought it was a still photo of Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he looks so focused. He yeah. is super intense here. I, I think he's trying to use the force to figure out what cards are in his <laughs> opponent's hand right now. All right, well, secret Paladin versus Freeze Mage. This is a lot. This is a matchup core that we have seen so much mm -hmm. this weekend, but give us the rundown on it anyway. Yes, we have. It is favored towards the freeze mage, especially I see this forgotten torch here. Really useful in getting rid of the knife juggler, the secret keeper in the early game. But you know what? The secret paladin has been able to get some of those hard fought wins. If you have Lotheb, if you have Iron Beak Owl, and if the freeze mage just gets kind of unlucky, the secret paladin can get a win. It is pretty difficult though. Yeah, this matchup has actually been one of the reasons we were just saying that we have seen Secret Paladin struggle quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the weekend. Uh, typically, the Secret Paladin deck needs to get out to a very aggressive start uh, and uh, have the Freeze Mage, as you said, struggle a little bit with its draws in order to, to have a great opportunity to win. Uh, Al Sky High does have a pretty strong hand, though. The Mad Scientist and Acolyte of Pain will give him tools to not only find his secrets and, and get a little bit of card draw going, uh, but also let him interact with Admiral's Born oh, at the start as well. But Admirable's hand is also really strong. He's got Secret Keeper into two secrets or the Knife Juggler, whichever he chooses. And the Cog Hammer is really nice because it provides that resilience that you need on a board to get the damage to the, the Freeze Mage's face, which is hard enough for the Secret Paladin to do in the early game, considering the Freeze Mage has so much removal. Yeah, th we, there are some secrets in Admiral's hand, which is a lot of the time, especially with Redemption, uh, not what you want to see, you'd rather curve out, but they're still pretty good. And Secret Keeper uh, it was a card that was put in the deck to sort of get rid of those inconsistencies, where if you do draw into secrets early on, you have a way to snowball that, uh, as opposed to relying strictly on drawing your high power minions on curve, like Shielded Minibod or muster for battle. And uh, this isn't really something you see all that often, which is the turn two cog hammer from Adam Mobile uh, getting the buff on his Seeker Keeper. Here it's gonna end up, uh, because the Mad Scientist is in play, it's gonna end up helping protect that Seeker Keeper. And the, the Knife Juggler wouldn't have been a particularly effective draw. So uh, admirable with a, you know, a somewhat unusual, pretty heads up play there. Yeah, and Admirable has some choices to make here. He looks like he's gonna go ahead with the Knife Juggler. 
Both secrets would have been nice as well because he could have used it to clear off the accolade of pain, only giving All Sky High one draw. Uh, but he has actually curved out pretty nicely for the next couple of turns with that Sludge Belcher and then, of course, Mysterious Challenger. Yeah, currently Admirable is missing a, uh, a four drop right now, but I believe the, the, the song goes top deck shredder, so we'll see if he does in fact <laughs> exactly. have perfect <laughs> I hate that song. I love it. I it's love so it. great. Oh my uh, god. That entire compilation is so funny. It's actually yeah. why when I, I actually hear the, the Adele song, hello, I literally yeah. just immediately think, well met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, All Sky High, he does play his secret, which incidentally buffs his opponent's secret keeper up to a 3-4. does choose to slow things down with an Ice Lance on that secret keeper. Yeah, yeah. But he's got a lot of card draw still, so he can, you know, this mm -hmm. is where a situation want to want to be. Both secrets, card draw. Yeah, All Sky High definitely doing pretty well. He wants to mitigate the damage at this point, but with that Ice Barrier up, it's already not too bad. You know, he's not doing too bad. Admirable doesn't have that much damage, and he is going to be skipping his turn four, which is really awful for the Secret Paladin. Unfortunately, no top deck Shredder here for Admirable. Not, in fact, the perfect curve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the mythical perfect curve. I don't know if we've seen many perfect curves from Secret Paladins this weekend, but... Uh, Admirable, he is going to have some power plays moving forward in those turns. Uh, but he, he played that turn a little slow, maybe to give the illusion that he has more to do than just play hero power with a, with a, with a secret. And uh, All Sky High, without a ton to do of his own, uh, I'd be curious how he does decide to spend this last two mana. I, I imagine he's going to go ahead and use this Engineer. Uh, but we know that Admirable actually just played a Redemption, which would be not a great target with if he did ping off that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Recruit there. So now Admirable back to having a reasonable curve, has the Belcher to play this turn, and a lot of high end in his hand. Not, he, he has a reasonable amount of pressure with this early board uh, and going to have a lot of tools to uh, you know, keep things going as the game progresses. Hmm, reasonable curve. Sludge Belcher in the back-to-back -back Mysterious Challengers well, into Tyrion. This is, this is really a matchup where the Mysterious Challenger is much less powerful. It's much more important that you actually have the early pressure prior to that stage of the game because the Freeze Mage deck does have so many tools that can largely nullify the impact of your larger minions. Exactly. Admirable does have some really strong turns coming up, but All Sky High is still at a really nice health total. I mean, he's at 22. He just got a really good Tharasan, hit that Forgotten Torch, the Fireball Ice Lance, as well as he does have a board freeze and more card draw. So I don't think Elskar is too worried here. And I, I wonder if we'll see Admiral trade in his Secret Keeper or use his face in some capacity to, to take off this Emperor. Uh, he does have, you know, as, as you mentioned, a very strong board here to protect. But he certainly doesn't want to give uh, All Sky High more opportunities to get ticks of that Emperor. Yeah, this is Lothep is probably going to be a key card in this in this matchup because Admirable is being able to build up a, a pretty large board. All Sky High doesn't have a board clear. He's got ways to stall, but he doesn't have a board clear. So if Admirable can hold on to this and draw into a Lothep. Oh, well, there's I the blizzard. I spoke too soon. <laughs> yeah, now All Sky High has access to two back-to-back -back board freezes, which is going to make it really difficult for Admirable to deal the remaining damage that he needs to, as well as All Sky High having the second ice block in hand. Alex Straza, which can be used normally offensively, but also defensively, and is pretty good against the Secret Paladin once they run out of, you know, of cards and of minions. Yeah, and it looks like we're just going to see that Frost Nova. And thanks to that Emperor cost reduction, uh, All Sky High actually has the opportunity to just play Alex Straza on eight. Uh, and potentially set Admirable's life total to 15 while uh, he has himself essentially protected by the Frost Nova this turn, so there's no risk of his block getting broken. Mm -hmm. Extra damage coming from that Blood Mage Thalon. That was not quite enough to Alex Straza and follow up with a kill the very next turn, but he does have a couple draws still to pick up that remaining damage. A Frost Bolt would do it. Yeah, Frost Bolt and Ice Lance either would be lethal if he does pick them up, and he has two, two draws immediately uh, in order to find those. Yeah, Admirable is just going to, you know, try and keep chipping away, hoping that Al Sky High doesn't have ways to stop this board or that he can draw into that load that, but and else, this is why the matchup's so tough. Yeah, All Sky High, he has, he has a lot of tools right now, even though he doesn't have necessarily the lethal next turn. Uh, he can Alex Straza Admirable, and then he has uh, a lot of tools. Oh, looks like he, might, he may not be going for it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. He may... Hmm. He could, Alex Straza, if he doesn't draw into lethal, Blizzard and Ice Block the very next turn. We're assuming Admirable is going to pop 
all sky highs block this turn. I, but I guess he's gonna go with the ping, maybe a blizzard this turn instead. Uh, yeah, he, he could be trying to uh, trying to ensure that he, he does have just the one-two punch mm -hmm. of the Alexstrasza into some sort of kill. Uh, this uh, Mad Titus goes down to the juggle, and that will give All Sky High a uh, ice barrier as well, which makes his, his life a little bit safer. He might have been afraid of Lothab. Because if you, if you Alexstrasza on a turn, before Lothep's played, well, you know your opponent's gonna pop your block the next mm -hmm. turn. It's a really mm -hmm. scary situation. A absolutely. Who am I? None of your business. Second mysterious challenger coming down, mm, pulling a couple of secrets, but none of them are too useful in this case. Yeah. Likely just noble sacrifice and avenge. Yeah, and this is sort of what we were talking about earlier when we were saying that, yes, uh, Admirable had a very powerful curve with a lot of big minions, but this isn't really a matchup where the uh, the games typically come down to oh I've got a bunch of big minions. It's more mm -hmm. about how much pressure can you can you get early and can you cut off the freeze mage's window to really uh, put together what they need. Yeah, and it's situations like this that Kit Kats actually put the Ragnaros into his secret paladin, but unfortunately he never drew it when it would be most useful. And, and that Frost Nova draw from All Sky High is also very big. It, it does give him uh, additional tools to potentially keep himself. Uh, from getting uh, from getting broken by minions in future turns, but it looks like All Sky High is still <laughs> just playing it really slowly here. Uh, the frost over here, as just mentioned, can just freeze this board, and that There's frost bolt. The damage that I he imagine, needed. yeah, I imagine now he's going to go ahead and uh, likely go on the offensive next turn. Yeah, admirable. He's got a full board, can't do anything. Alex Straza to the face. I bring life and blood. <laughs> <laughs> As, oh, that, that, as far as I can tell, that's what she said. That yeah. was the best Alex Raza impression I think I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, yes. And you know what? This is exactly the way that the Freeze Mage Secret Paladin game is supposed to go. In the favor of the Freeze Mage, Secret Paladin with a very strong board, doing what it does best and curving out really well. But when the Secret Paladin draws what it needs, or uh, sorry, the Freeze Mage draws what it needs, uh, the Secret do. Paladin just isn't able to, to you know, deal those final points of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, All Sky High is even able to use some leftover mana to Forgotten Torch this turn. Uh, that does uh, help if he does get, for instance, low theft. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he's able to have gotten the damage in here. He can possibly just follow up with Ice Block the following turn and then not necessarily need to do as much damage in a future turn. Yeah. Also, I mean, I, I think he just didn't know what else to do with his mana. Okay. So he was like, whatever. Yeah. Might as well burn your face. Because Lo Lothab wouldn't even make too much of a difference. He'd still <laughs> be able to ice block and then kill him the next turn with the amount of damage in his, yeah, and yeah. his hand. Just look at how much power he has in play. He has two, two BGH-able minions, another minion just short of BGH range. But it just doesn't matter. This is just how Freeze Mage operates. He's able to uh, put Admiral position where so few of his cards effectively do anything. Mm -hmm. You know what, the only thing to save him here would be that Kazan Mystic tech that you rarely see, but uh, I don't think Admiral's got it at this point. And even if he did, it doesn't look like he's going to have room on board to play it. He actually just dies this turn. Yeah, he's just dead. <laughs> yeah, there's Fireball. I into... burn eye! Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, nope. How <laughs> not there. funny would that be? <laughs> oh, man. I'm teching it in. Yeah, so while, while he did draw the fireball that turn, mm -hmm. All Sky High, he had the burst oh, damage yeah. he needed in his hand to finish that game off. So uh, that will be one game to All Sky High, who leads Admirable in this uh, deciding match. Yeah, looking at Admirable's lineup, I, I think he, you can pretty confidently say that he a lot of times he knows that he's going to lose to Freeze Mage mm -hmm. at some point. So losing in the first match, yeah, it is not very cool to go down in the first match. It, it's uh, it, it's still, he probably is pretty confident moving forward, or maybe not confident, but isn't too sad. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you like to win rather than lose, just kind of how things go. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah. Interesting concept. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's you know, I'm a professional gamer. That's, yeah. I, I figured that part out. Yeah. But uh, but no, I mean, I, I think that he knows that his Secret Paladin deck is vulnerable to uh, to that Freeze Mage in particular. So I, I suspect that he's he's he was ready to, to lose that mentally coming in, and uh, you know he'll be fine coming out. Yeah, losing is definitely not quite as cool as your Alex Straza impression. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's only one game. Admirable can still certainly make a comeback. Yeah, I, I've I've spent a lot of time with Admirable over like the past six months. I've casted with him a lot. I've I've played matches with him. And he's a guy that is 
hyper competitive. Now, a lot of the, all these players that are playing today are competitive, but Admirable is hyper competitive. Mm -hmm. Even if you're just playing silly decks with him in a, in a nice, comfortable situation, like while you're going out to eat and you boot up your phones and play whatever decks, yeah, he's going to want to smash you no matter what. So uh, he's also a very emotional player. Um, but in this situation, you see how focused he was in that match? Mm -hmm. I think he was just really trying to reach through the internet and yeah. read his opponent's mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it, it's pretty funny to see the reactions of some of these players when they get into an environment where they're, where they're stressed. But um, Adderable still has Warrior left and um, Warlock, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as well as that Secret Paladin. So... Patron Warrior has kind of struggled. Yeah, we haven't seen Patron Warrior do terribly well so far, uh, but it will be once again Admiral with that Secret Paladin deck, and it's now all sky high playing uh, the Reno Warlock deck we saw him playing earlier. He had some interesting card choices in this deck that we saw earlier. Uh, the Doomsayer is an interesting one that we didn't see before, mm -hmm. but uh, he also even has a Sacrificial Pact in this deck, which I, I have to imagine was a nod toward just how much Warlock he expected to see in the tournament. Yeah, it seems strange, but I actually quite like it. We've seen demon hand locks, mm -hmm. much to our surprise, of course, plenty of zoo locks and that sacrificial pact. You can even use it on your own demons, get yourself that quick burst of health or on your opponent's imp gang boss, a flame imp, things that you're gonna see really frequently and in almost everybody's lineup. But I'd like to point out, we see this Harrison Jones tech, which is going to be really nice against the Paladin, so good that he might even be willing to keep it in his opening hand. I, I think if I were in all sky high's position, I, I, very, I, I would consider keeping this entire hand mm -hmm. because you have the Doomsayer, which even without any kind of freeze effects is extremely effective against Paladin. You're not playing Doomsayer because you have Frost Nova, you're a Warlock deck. <laughs> uh, and uh, it looks like it, he does, in fact, choose to hold on to all three of those. And uh, one of the things about Warlock uh, is that because you have Life Tap as your hero power, you, you actually are able to keep more sort of speculative tech cards in your opening hands because you have more draws to, to find your curve and such as the game progresses. Yeah, and we see he gets that Dark Peddler off the top. Really solid two drop. Admirable's hand, however, is looking very strong as well. Coin into a two drop, follow up with a two drop, muster for battle, and then Keeper of Uldemon, which is so flexible. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see uh, exactly how All Sky High does choose to navigate this. I think he may just fire off the Doomsayer right away. Uh, Preventing the Secret Paladin, and he does, preventing the Secret Paladin player from getting any significant board development in the first couple of turns while you just get to life tap uh, is is very effective. And Admirable, he uh, he just wants his board to ha you know, so much that he just throws away that spider just in order to get the two spectral spiderlings on the board. Yeah, he actually has more power than what he does, <laughs> yeah. What he would have started he with. He upgraded. You. Yeah. And uh, the Dark Peddler finds a Mystery Void Walker. Which lines up very well against these spiders, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see where Admiral was going, playing that Haunted Creeper, even though it was going to die. The Death Rattle's still really valuable, and then the Muster for Battle, going to be able to pick off All Sky High's Demon right there. Mm -hmm. And what Admiral has right now actually matches up pretty well against All Sky High's hand. Uh, though I, I like that Refreshment Vendor. That's, uh, that's a nice draw. And uh, I imagine we'll see the Peddler. Oh, it's actually going to go face. Wow. Yeah, I guess just force the trade from Admirable. He's likely going to want to. Um, he could actually keep her and then get a, a pretty nice trade there. Yeah, well, I actually think the fact that Defender is in All Sky's guy his hand is actually probably what uh, led him to make that particular attack. Uh, he, he does have the opportunity to uh, use that Defender to, to buff his board if that does stick around, but Admirable does use the uh, Kappa of Ultimon to, to take down <laughs> that, uh, that minion there. Yeah, and All Sky High does have the option to get a two-card Harrison if he wants it. The Not the most valuable minion, but it is still pretty nice. It's nice to he does he does effectively get more or less two free life taps mm -hmm. out of that, which is which is a pretty big deal when he's potentially looking for board clear, which he did just find with that Shadow Flame. I want to talk to All Sky High's opponents that we he played against off stream, and ask how many of them lost because Sacrificial Pack took out a demon. <laughs> I, I mean, want to see if any of them lost because he sacrificial packed them when they after they played Jaraxxus. Yeah, sacrificial packed in Jaraxxus is uh, is pretty good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out it's pretty good. Uh, I, I actually some of my, my favorite moments uh, have involved getting uh, sacrificial packed off Nefarian in yep. my Dragon Mage deck. Oh, that, like, oh that, you, that is fun. You're Jaraxxus. What a coincidence. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. The true power of the dragons. <laughs> I'll never tell. You know, at Warlock, you shouldn't... You know, I, I'm trying to remember the exact wording. I, I had it in my head. It's like, don't 
trifle with power you don't understand. I think that's his entrance mm -hmm. emote against them. Not really sure. I ruined it. I ruined it. No, it was wonderful. Ruined. Ruined. <laughs> saved. Someone get Bob Ross in here. We need to be saved. <laughs> Well, Admirable really needs to pick up uh, a highly impactful minion next turn if he wants to, you know, live the, the Secret Paladin dream. All right, but he he does choose to just send all of his minions at face there. There is Jiraxis, speak of the demon. And uh, we do see All Sky High send in that minion to the the Keeper of Ultimon. Now he has an excellent opportunity uh, if he so chooses to Shadow Flame away Admiral's entire board. Yeah, uh, I have to see he would do it. Yeah, this is this is going to be particularly scary for all Sky High because if he doesn't wipe this board this turn, uh, there is the threat of competitive spirit. But now, oh, you Ooh. see Admiral's look in his face. He's, he just closes his eyes in uh, sadness, I think. Yeah. as he, he And he draws another big minion. That's actually the only card in his deck I think he couldn't play at that point with yeah. Dr. Boom mm -hmm. in his hand. With, so... With playing against Reno Warlock, it's only a matter of time before they draw into the AoE, but it's a little bit inconsistent. And Admirable made the conscious decision to not play around AoE and go for more face damage. There's probably something that Al Sky High did earlier that made him think that he didn't have AoE, mm -hmm. and that's what prompted him to make that decision. But he is punished for it as Al Sky High shadow flings away the entire board. And you know what? Unfortunately, is the Secret Paladin versus the Reno Lock. That's just what you have to do sometimes. You're yeah. not going to be able to come back after a Reno, so you need to push for damage while you have it. And if the board clears are there, then well, you just you just don't win. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes when you are playing an aggressive deck, the the philosophy of just make them have it is mm -hmm. uh, is often a a, a good direction. Uh, All Sky High fires up this mortal coil, taking out the Boom Bot. Oh, he can brand BGH and kill the Doctor Boom twice. That's that's the a big value. Price. <laughs> oh, only okay. two on the implosion. Not likely to matter too much here, though. Boombots do take out the refreshment vendor, and he's going to oh. sacrificial pack <laughs> one of his own imps. Value. Oh, and Marble's face not even changing for a second. And then All Sky High does have a great answer to this Tyrion. Well, there's another one. Wow. He can actually, if he so chooses Iron Beak Owl and Siphon, yeah, it actually allows him to keep this board advantage, push for 10 damage. That puts Admiral down to just four health, and no, oh, actually it's zero. The answer, is, the answer is he's done with this game. <laughs> you could tell that Admiral's going to concede because the only time the entire match he took his hand off his face was because he was reaching for the concede button. He was like, "Oh, escape." Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a that's rough. And Admiral, in the since this is the lower bracket, Admiral mm -hmm. did lose one other match, and in the last match he lost, he actually got swept. His secret pouting got swept, reverse swept. So this is now in the two matches. Well, the one match he lost, and now the match that he's down, 0-5 for Secret Paladin. Oh, wow. I actually now remember that, but I did not remember that it was admirable because we just had Uther on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, had, yeah. I had mistaken oh, okay. that for, for being Kit yeah. Kats because we have seen Kit Kats also struggle mm. with the Secret Paladin deck. But, that uh, explains yeah. why I'm just now, seeing admirable yes, for the first now, time. Now I remember why I didn't remember admirable on stream before. Oh, and then he was Gul'dan, and they had similar beards. Yeah. Okay, it's coming back to me now. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Millions of spectators are watching on and rejoicing at the fact that Secret Paladin uh, is, is not doing well, but Admirable is definitely not one of them. Uh, he made it really far through the tournament, though, and it had success up until that point. It had to with Conquest yep. Foreman, mm -hmm. of course. But now he's in a situation where not only does he have to find a win with that, he has to win three times in a row with his three decks in order to take this one, which is a daunting task. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a tough spot uh, knowing that you know, he can't drop another game. And uh, I believe, what, what's the deck that that, uh, that uh, he he's, has to overcome with uh, with each of his decks at this point? It's not Mage, it's not Warlock, I can tell I, I you can that look up sure. there, there it's it is. It's Paladin. Paladin. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm trying to remember here, but uh, I mean that that is a deck that uh, you know we have seen struggle again. Mm -hmm. You know we we've seen Secret Paladin struggle all day, and uh, I, I believe that Admirable's lineup may have the tools, assuming he can win the mirror match, yeah, uh, to punish that. But oh, this is not a typical it's Secret Paladin deck. All Sky High is in fact playing Egg Paladin as well. Egg Paladin with Sea Giant. That's like your dream come true, TJ. <laughs> it, is. it is. I mean, that's literally the dream. It really is. Actually, I'm not a huge fan of eggs. Uh, but you know what? The Sea Giant, especially in the mirror, is so strong. Yeah, because the boards are going to be flooded. And Admirable might, might not expect it. Big Game Hunter is not a card that a lot of times you tech into 
Secret Paladin. So you have to rely on having a big enough board to deal with the Sea Giant when it comes down. Yeah, they, this is a, a matchup, just Paladin versus Paladin, where naturally a lot of minions do uh, enter the battlefield. And Sea Giant will be able to come down for, for very cheap, in many cases very early in the game. Uh, and that can cause a lot of headaches because it does outclass everything else uh, up up until you get to the Dr. Booms of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to imagine he would want to keep it, especially after Muster for Battle. You can get a Sea Giant down on a turn three, turn four. He's an excellent draw in addition to that as well, the, the mini bot. And uh, assuming he, he finds some sort of enabler, the egg seems quite nice. It He's looks just like going to keep it all. I, no. I suppose. Oh, no. Okay, a he did late not... mulligan. There we go. And uh, that muster for battle, uh, uh, definitely a nice draw there. Admirable with, with an excellent curve as well. Uh, he does have the Avenge heading into Minibot and Knife Juggler. Yeah, very comparable mulligans. The Ooh. Mysterious Challenger. All Sky High is going to want to keep that coin because he does have a higher curve. But at the same time, you have nothing to do on turn one. And you have two two drops. So you could just sort of hope that you're top decking Shredder, top decking Sludge Belcher. <laughs> The thing about the egg is that you do have to invest some cards into making sure that you have a consistent enough activator for it. Mm -hmm. And that potentially weakens the deck and weakens the overall power of your draw, especially in the mirror. So that Ruby egg's really not doing anything right now that Al Sky High doesn't have an activator for it. And Admirable has a little bit more impactful cards right away in his hand, like Knife Juggler. The, uh Minibot for Admirable is, is excellent here because it does preserve uh, the fact that he is going to be able to set up a, an Avenge next turn. Uh, if if All Sky High were able to just trade into his minion on turn two, the, the Avenge wouldn't really have much of a, much function. Uh, but here, actually, Admirable able to set up the Redemption as well. And this is one of the scary uh, situations playing against Secret Paladin, when in some cases you're like, can I even attack? Because if that mm -hmm. actually was just Noble Sacrifice plus mm -hmm. Avenge, suddenly your opponent has a, a, a very, very scary board. Yeah, it's definitely a tough choice for All Sky High. He could play the monster for battle, attack with the weapon first to check for the Noble Sacrifice, but it doesn't look like he wants to do that. He does get to kill the Knife Juggler, but unfortunately it comes right back. Yeah, although he is going to be able to remove the damaged Juggler with his muster here. Uh, so he's actually in an okay spot. Uh, Admiral has the, the biggest minion on the board, but uh, All Sky High has more minions. And Admiral, once again, has a little bit of a, a problem hole in his curve here. True Silver Champion will allow him to take out this spider. Uh, but All Sky High currently has the tools, if he so chooses, to wipe off Admiral's one minion. Ooh, and that's that makes it a lot easier, too. Yeah, absolutely. Now you clear. You can even play the Dragon Egg. Noble Sacrifice if you want, which will stop that second True Silver charge. You do waste a mana if you want to play the Dragon Egg. So maybe Hero Power is a little bit better here, but definitely a great spot for All Sky High. Yeah, it looks like he is kind of debating. Oh, he's actually not going to use the Abusive Sergeant. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I think that his, his feeling is that because he has that Noble Sacrifice up, it's putting him in a situation where perhaps he just wants to be the aggressor in race rather mm -hmm. than trade any of his minions into that mini bot. But you know what, with these boards gone, they're in virtually the same position as far as hands. We see a Mysterious Challenger, a Dr. Boom in both hands. Holy uh, Admirable's weapon is better than All Sky High's, but he has more charges than Admirable. It's very similar at this point. Right, well, forget about racing. All Sky High trades in his whole board there. And uh, perhaps he's saving that Abusive Sergeant as an activator for the, the Dragon Egg. He wants to ensure that he will have some opportunity to get value out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, Admirable finds himself in that similar position that you mentioned with the hole in the curve. Yeah, and, Noble and Sacrifice, is, not a great draw. Noble Sacrifice is not very good here for Admirable. It does, uh, it does just get eaten by a weapon charge from All Sky High. And actually, using his hero power here can potentially just give All Sky High the ability to get a 2-1 out of his Dragon Egg. Yeah, and the Minibot isn't the greatest draw for All Sky High, but it gives him something to play. Having to hero power on turn five, especially as the Paladin that wants that perfect curve, is awful in the mirror. Which came first, the Dragon or the Egg? In this case, it's the Egg. The Egg. And uh, we got a Dragon in play, so I'm happy. All right, where was the Dragon <laughs> that laid that Egg, Kibler? <laughs> I think it was in Black Rock Mountain. Not See, then the Dragon came first. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, Mysterious Challenger comes down first for Admirable, but that's the only thing that yeah, he has he on the board. so far behind on this board, and All Sky High has a Challenger of his own, which will put him in a pretty powerful position because having this full board with Challenger makes uh, a card like Competitive Spirit so much more powerful. 
Yeah, the person to play the Mysterious Challenger with the bigger board generally has the advantage. So here, the competitive spirit is going to get so much value. Admirable does get to drop the Doctor Boom first, however, which is also very strong. But is it enough? We're going to find out. Yeah, yes, we will. <laughs> and here, I think All Sky High is debating whether he wants to attack with his, his face or his 1-1. One -one. Uh, I think he, he's looking at the, the, the cost of taking the two damage here might end up being... Uh, being troublesome given that his opponent has such a big minion in play and he doesn't want to risk uh, ending up dying to that damage. But competitive spirit for Admirable buffs that challenger to enormous size. Yeah. Fortunately, it looks like Admirable is going to have to trade the true silver into the Noble Sacrifice. That never feels too good. And then, you know, Avenge could go on the Mysterious Challenger like it does, I would say, <laughs> nine times out of ten. Uh, it will give uh, Admirable the ability to actually remove the challenger with his challenger, mm -hmm. though. And uh, mm -hmm. Admirable's currently wins in a fight pretty convincingly. But all, the rest of All Sky High's board is, uh, is very powerful to be poised to deal with whatever else Admiral might play. Looks like Admirable's going to drop that Dr. Boom. All Sky High does have a nice board. The question is, can it deal with the Dr. Boom coming out? It depends on where this Avenge goes. I also think Admirable has to be a little bit scared of what oh, secrets wow. exactly might might be, be there. Because if there is, say, a uh, Repentance, mm -hmm. his Dr. Boom loses so much of its impact. Uh, it's not clear that it has any opportunity to potentially play around that, though. Yeah, we don't see Repentance in every Secret Paladin, but it definitely is a good tech choice. And I imagine we're going to see revenge. We may see if we see redemption here. We do. Okay. So he's got to he's got to assume that there's no repentance at this mm -hmm. point anyway, because an egg paladin deck almost certainly plays competitive spirit to buff those eggs. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, he does make the trade, but that's a huge competitive spirit, and Al Sky High is actually getting dangerously close to lethal damage. 12, 15, 16, 17 one damage? damage off lethal. Actually, one damage off lethal. Oh, dear. Uh, that that uh, little whelpling has graduated to Volcanic Drake. It's now a 6-4. <laughs> moving up in the world. But uh, I mean, even though Al Sky High does not have lethal this turn, he, he's able to uh, eat Admirable's entire board with his and then just play his own Dr. Boom. Yeah, that's putting All Sky High in the dominant position. And he's got the Mysterious Challenger again after that if he wants a follow up. Admirable, Shredder, and Haunted Creeper are good. Noble Sacrifice is okay, but you know, when he needs he needs something like a Tyrion here, yeah. and even that's not going to be enough. Something like a Tyrion, more like exactly a Tyrion. Tyrion. That, oh, that is exactly a Tyrion. <laughs> and look, that was one of the first. We see we Admirable actually sit up out of his chair. He, he was despondent before that, but. Uh, uh. He's going to hope to put his faith in the light right now. I don't think it, it might, might not, not be even enough. matter. No. It might not be enough. He may need to get uh, a little bit fortunate with those boom bots in order to even what be able to survive this fight the Tyrion. Yeah, if the yeah. boom bot can kill off the volcanic Drake of sorts, <laughs> uh, then maybe he's got a chance. It won't oh, be lethal no. then, but. Uh, well, it is. Uh, it gets some damage in Doctor Boom, but that's not enough. Yeah. No. And there it is. Wow. All Sky High with a 3-0 sweep of Admirable, who uh, just couldn't find a win with that Paladin deck. Yeah, so that means Al Sky High is the seventh player to qualify for the America's Championship in just a few weeks. Unfortunately, Admirable falls, but what a plan and what a selection of decks from Al Sky High coming into this. I actually believe he is now our second competitor to qualify for the championships with Egg Paladin today. Wow. That's Witty, oh, man. Witty Bill amazing. earlier today also playing Egg That's Paladin. That's true. It was actually after our first three matches, we had seen Deathwing Control Warrior, Egg Paladin, and Control Priest all advance, and zero traditional Secret Paladin. Deck. I think everybody could say this is karma for every <laughs> Secret Paladin okay. player. I mean, this is well-deserved. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure Secret Paladins performed well in this tournament, but yeah. unfortunately, it seems like they're getting reverse swept more than ever any other deck. We yeah. have seen, because of the popularity of Secret Paladin, a lot of players have built their lineups with that deck firmly in mind and have generally brought brought decks that, that tend to, to excel in that particular matchup. And I mean, we saw it right here. All Sky High, you know, his, his Warlock deck with a lot of board clear, his mm -hmm. Freeze Mage deck, and then the Egg Paladin deck, which is just a little bit faster, mm -hmm. able to get in the board with more presence before that challenger comes down, and he was able to take it down. Yeah, we've been interviewing players throughout the day, and I think most of them have said that their plan coming in was to target specific lineups, most importantly the lineups that ran Secret Paladin and Zoo Warlock. So it's you have to say that Secret Paladin didn't perform well, but like you said, you have to look at the fact that uh, 
the deck was countered from the beginning. Well, that, that's and it's precisely the reason I yeah. think that it that it performed poorly is because players identified it as a core feature of the metagame uh, and chose to to target it specifically with their deck selection. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a stronger ladder deck than I think a tournament deck in this case, and we have to say it is at a little bit of a disadvantage, but. You know what? You can never feel too bad for the secret paladin players, unfortunately for myself. But you know what? I would say that the better players have advanced today. And, you know, feels bad for Admirable. He is an amazing caster and somebody that we wanted to see go through to next month. But you know what? He's going to get some points, going to get some money, and we may just see him back next time. Yeah, like we said, the spring season, uh, players that do well in the winter preliminaries, players that even participate in the winter preliminary, uh, get points towards the spring season. And if you do well, if you make that top 16, you get a lot of points. I think it's even 30 points That's for so first points. place oh, for wow. spring, which is more points than any player even earned from either <laughs> Europe or North America <laughs> for the entire winter season. Basically, so, if you win, it's a free trip through to next month. Yeah. next season. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense to reward players mm -hmm. for yeah. excellent performance early in the year. Yeah. We want to see the same players uh, you know, able to uh, come back and continue their stories, even if they were cut short here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what it means is they, they still have to fight through the preliminary. Right. It's not like getting those points automatically qualifies you for the Spring America's Championship. Getting those points means you get to the Spring Preliminary, which means you still have to keep up your game. You still have to do well enough in the Spring Preliminary to have a chance and, uh, of course, there's that last chance qualifier at the end of the year after the winter, spring, and summer championship. So having points then works out. But, um, you know, big, big, huge shout-outs once again to Al Sky High. Really cool to see those. But um, I, Admirable, he actually, a lot of players were saying Admirable coming into this tournament. And Admirable himself tweeted out, I believe, that he had worked harder for this than any other tournament mm -hmm. in, in, his, in his life or in his Hearthstone career. So that's a, a pretty crazy to think that a guy who has a pretty storied career as a pro back in the ESGN Fight Night days, put in more work for this than anything else. I mean, and he, he is a player who we have actually seen uh, f just fall a little bit short uh, on many occasions. I believe he actually was in the... Uh the uh, America's uh, Regional Championship a couple of years ago back in the Hammer Team Ballroom. Yeah, he yeah. was. He was one of the players who advanced uh, from the preliminary stage of that event as well. So certainly a player I expect we'll see more from again. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know what? He was just so close this time. Hopefully it's not going to, you know, he's not going to be dejected. He's not going to want to quit. But instead he's going to come back even stronger next time. And then he'll make it to the top eight and we'll see even better things. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately we couldn't get an interview with Al Sky High. But we do have Dan standing by who's going to interview Admirable about his experience in the America's Winter Preliminary. Congratulations to Sky High. He is another person to advance to the Winter's Finals happening in March. Uh, we do have another person joining us for an interview as well because Sky High, uh, we don't have an ability to communicate with him very well. It turns out he's a player uh, mainly from the Chinese region, but he is living in America for now, uh, doing some stuff within the region. Uh, so he is eligible to compete. However, we don't have an opportunity to interview him. Instead, we want to stop by with Admirable for a few words uh, to just chat with him and just get to know how his experience was for competing. Uh, Admirable well, first, I want to say congratulations. Top 12 in the region, ninth effectively, is an astounding result, even though you didn't get to make it to the finals. Um, what's the secret for you being able to balance casting and playing at such a high level? Uh, well, kind of casting and playing goes hand in hand. You know, obviously, uh, you want to work on the broadcasting skills as much as you can. Uh, but for me personally, uh, I've often found myself in analytical roles and I'm at the desk. And so being very practiced and being confident in your ability to play the game and understand players' thought processes, uh, you know, that goes hand in hand with practicing the game in general. Uh, with the new season uh, that was announced with the competitive changes, uh, having multiple championships in the year, I kind of got the, uh, the ambition to compete again. And so uh, this event was an opportunity to do that. And, uh, you know, we fell short this time, but uh, I, I, I don't think I'm upset with the way I played or with my lineup or anything like that. It's just uh, one of those things. Sometimes the decks perform and sometimes they don't. And uh, in this critical round, they just didn't perform. Yeah, uh, well, it's very mature of you to be able to handle that. Some people, when, when they're that close, it just burns. But I think you're definitely handling in stride, so props for that. Uh, you know, when you're when you're playing as much as you are, uh, are we going to be able to expect to see you more in the future? Because you said that you're interested in it. Are you going to continue to pursue it even more for the rest of the year? Or m might you be next to me casting? Or what's going to happen with that? <laughs> well, you know, if you don't win the events, there's always an opportunity to cast them, I suppose. Uh, we'd love to cast alongside you, of course. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't say that my focus is really on comp competition. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. It's always been a big part of my life, as well as gaming has been. Uh, but, you know, sort of being in, a, in, the, in the spotlight under our broadcast thing is, is also very good. I feel like I, I know a lot of the players personally and, and can help highlight 
things about them that make them special players. So uh, hopefully I have an opportunity to do more of that in the future. Uh, but as far as competing is concerned, um, I think ideally I'd probably take the opportunity to cast instead because I think that's where my passion's at. But uh, there certainly isn't really an experience quite like competing. And if you haven't done it, I really encourage you to kind of get your feet wet because, man, there's just nothing like it. Well said. Couldn't say it better myself. Honorable, do you have any final words you want to say, whether about yourself or about the format or any other person that went through and helped you practice to get to this point? Yeah, uh, I think that this format, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I think it's over with. Uh, really looking forward to uh, what Standard has to offer in terms of all the changes. Um, and I'd like to give a big thanks to all the people who helped me for this event. Uh, mostly, for the most part, I was talking about lineups and uh, deck builds and things like that. But a really big thanks to Chalky for helping me specifically prepare uh, for the matchups in general and helping me understand exactly what I need to do in every situation and then making the most of the tools I have. Without him, I don't think I would have had even close to this performance this event. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us, Admirable, and hopefully we'll see you back again in the future. Thank you. All right. So that was Nathan Nats, Admirable Zamora. Oftentimes you guys see him in the caster role, but in this case, he was competing at the very finish line to get to the Winter Championships. What an awesome achievement for any person that's looking to get into Hearthstone. I mean, this, it's a really good example from many different perspectives. The first is that if you're involved in Hearthstone at all, why not try to compete? The Hearthstone Championship Tour is about people like you who are watching. That's right, you who are watching right now can also compete in the Spring Championships. Just check out how you're going to be able to compete through all the stuff over at battle.net and enter to get points eligible for the Spring season beginning this month. So make sure you Top of the ladder and try your best. In the meantime, let us know about your thoughts on the match. We have seven players who have qualified. Who's your favorite so far? Hashtag HCT and let us know at Play Hearthstone or Facebook.com slash Hearthstone. I'm Frodo and when we come back, we have our eighth and final spot coming up to be given away here in the winter preliminaries. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this.